When Honda first handed us the keys to the BRV at the 2015 Tokyo Motor Show, we were very impressed. We knew it was going to be big because we in the Philippines, we like our SUV-ish vehicles. We like seven seats and we like them affordable. So good was the vehicle that Honda even built it here for a period of time. But of course, many things have changed since then. Many rivals are now in the market. Expander Cross, XL7, uh, the Veloz, and even the Rush. The question is, can the new BRV compete? Let's find out. Make no mistake about it, the Honda BRV is a very critical model for Honda here in the Philippines because it is the natural stepping stone from something like a Honda City or a Toyota Vios or a Hyundai Accent into something with seven seats that's good for a growing family. But of course, since the BRV was launched here in the Philippines as a first generation model, a lot of things have changed. You now have a lot of competitors that are following the formula of success that was found in the BRV. Front wheel drive, seven seats, looks very nice. You can see that formula in a lot of vehicles right now. XL7, Expander Cross, uh, even the Veloz, but well, the Rush. Not really because that one is still rear wheel drive. So what was Honda to do? Well, they needed to build on the lessons learned from the first generation BRV. And that's what we have here. Now for those that don't really like to watch the whole video, well, in a nutshell, Honda applied almost all of the lessons uh, to improve on the new generation BRV for 2023. And it is a good vehicle, but there are some caveats, but that will come towards the end of the video. Now let's get into the design. Now from this angle, you can see well the differences between the two and it really boils down to the family look. Starting with this one. Now this kind of Honda family look we've been seeing with uh, a lot of their vehicles from maybe eight years ago, 10 years ago, uh, with the way the headlights and the front grille kind of integrate together, which is kind of nice for the time uh, with the Honda Jazz, the Honda City, a CRV, Accord even. So now they've kind of evolved that look into what we see here. If you've looked at other recent Honda models, you'll see a lot of the same design cues like the horizontal slats for the grille, uh, the reduced chrome. See here, a lot of chrome here. Just this one, it's like satin silver there, some chrome down there. So yeah, you see the differences. They're now going for less chrome. Also, the grille kind of goes into the headlight. That's something a lot of automakers are also doing now. You know, uh, Honda also uses these uh, cutouts or divisions on the LED headlights, which does look really nice. But the thing I really like the most, the color. We first saw this with, uh, I think it was the HRV, and in the sunlight, it does look fantastic. It comes out with a blue tinge to the white, which is kind of neat. Pearlescent-ish, but not really, not, not the per pearlescent uh, violet kind of thing going on before. But one thing that's really notable here, is the wheel design. Actually, the wheels are a little bit bigger, but what's more important, the type of tires they use. In these ones, they use economy, fuel economy rated tires, or at least prioritizing fuel economy. These ones, these are more touring tires. It's actually Turanzas. And in terms of uh, the way it behaves on the road, it's just a lot better when it comes to driving and being more quiet. But what's also noticeable here, the size difference. The new BRV is longer and wider than this one which is basically chunkier, you know, just like us after this Christmas season, but I digress. Uh, something I want to note here though, there are a lot of accessories on this version of the BRV. The one they sent us had all these bits and bobs all around the cabin. So uh, keep that in mind. I mean, see here, here, more inside. So we'll leave you a list of all the things they did to this one. So you don't walk into a dealership asking for the VX version of the BRV and seeing you know, that it doesn't have any of these bits. Now let's check out what's under the hood. Now that we have both hoods open, we can check out what's different. Starting with the older BRV. Now this engine is the L15Z. It's a single overhead camshaft version and it uses a CVT. It's a very familiar engine that we've seen in a lot of Honda models in the past. Uh, and it's actually something that we've seen to be very, very reliable, but not exactly exciting. But when we jump on over 
to the new BRV, well, that's when things get a bit more interesting because you can see the engine itself is a lot bigger. It's a dual overhead camshaft engine. As you can see, two cams right there. So for you guys who like to put DOHC on your Honda, you can do it with this one. Now, it also uses a CVT driving the front wheels just like that one. Now, it may seem like uh, just a little bit of an upgrade, but in terms of power, not really. It still makes 121 horsepower and, well, pretty much the same number in com in when it comes to torque. Because in terms of uh, performance upgrades, not really. But what we can tell, looking at both side by side, is that the platform is very, very different. That is something that is very important with the Honda BRV. It's the difference with the platform. This one uses a platform derived from the Brio and the Mobilio, but this one uses a more modern platform which was derived from the Honda City. Now, if you look here, you can see the positioning of the shock towers are very different compared to this other model. These sit far lower. These ones sit a bit higher, if anything. It may even seem like it's long travel. But also look at the, the panels here. They're also very different. So it, you know it's not really just a new skin for this one compared to that one. Like, like they took the platform of this and then put in a new body, that's it. No, it's totally different. Even when you look at the front support here. See, if you look right here, the support, see the, the receptacle for the radiator totally different compared to that one. You'll see that in a lot of, a lot of other uh, newer Honda models, but not in the older BRV. So all in all, it seems like it's going to be an interesting drive uh, for the BRV in the way things have changed with the platform of the vehicle. But first, let's go inside. The truly major improvement with the BRV is when it comes to the space. Of course, the space starts with the extra dimensions of the vehicle. You can see from that angle right there, there is a big difference in terms of the width of the vehicles. But does it result in more space? So let's look at the older BRV so I can show you. Right now, I have it all folded down. And as you can see, it's not the kind of innovative uh, folding down interior that we expect from typically Honda. They do like their magic seats as some of you in the States call it. But with the older generation BRV, that's not really what we're getting. Instead, it's kind of a step kind of thing because this seat does not go down to the level of the floor to form one continuous space. Even then, when you look at, when you lift it up here, if you want maximum space, yeah, not really fantastic, is it? But with the new BRV, that has improved because once we pop this open, right now I don't have it folded down yet, but once we start messing around with this interior, we're gonna show you a lot of the, the what makes this really different. For one, if you notice, it's a two-tier design. And this one actually, I kind of wish they formed up a seal here so it's kind of more seamless because it doesn't look as neat as I would like it. Also, there are some accessories here like the seat back protector. But beyond that, this is going, this is going to be pretty much uh, common without, with all the BRV variants. So to fold down, oh, actually not there, right here. Fold it down right there, fold it down right here. See, a fold flat space, but wait, there is more. If I go around here, whoop, right there. And if I go around the other side, you can fold down everything flat. Well, there is a bit of a gap here, but if you have something long, that can fit right there. Now, in terms of length, it's about 65 inches from here to the edge of the middle row and about 39.5 inches wide. Strangely enough, that is actually not bigger than the first generation BRV. If anything, it's a little bit smaller. But considering that you do have a nice flat load space, I'd say it's better. 
with the first generation BRV, what we always found nice was the interior because it always looked modern. It looked well built, even though it does use quite a bit of hard plastic. But the good thing is that it does look good. This one, it's kind of the same. Yes, you see a lot of hard plastic. There's a pad here. But the execution of the design of the interior is very neat and clean. If anything, you would really want to keep this clean because, yes, it just looks nice and pleasant uh, when you're driving in traffic. Even with the way the door inserts look right here, it's all really, really good. The silver trim looks, it looks well built. That is something uh, you want to have in any vehicle. It just has to look well built, like all the panels fit together very, very nicely. Now, going around some of the details uh, here. Uh, from the driver's seat, you have a nice uh, multi-info display there with a standard dual binnacle gauge. It's not a full digital screen like we're seeing with other models yet, but hopefully in the future, Honda can do something like that. The steering wheel, it has a nice, it's actually perfectly round. It has a nice thick grip to it, and it has quite a few buttons from the Honda parts bin. Now, what I mentioned before about the platform, it also speaks of uh, the parts bin that Honda is going to use. So, uh, with the previous generation BRV, it was actually using uh, parts, uh, interior parts particularly, from the previous generations of the Honda City, the Honda Jazz. This one, it's kind of the same thing, but one generation forward. So, if you look at the buttons here, a lot of the things here look familiar if you own, let's say, a 2014, 2015 City. That's how it looks. Uh, even with the steering wheel, with the Civic, it looks all very familiar. Even the paddle shifters and the indicate the stocks look very, very familiar if you're used to that uh, generation of Honda. So, to, that's what Honda is doing to economize uh, the BRV and other models that are like uh, the, the more affordable lines or the Brio, that kind of thing you will see these kinds of uh, uh, decisions to use parts uh, that are a little bit older but work perfectly fine. And mind you, a lot of the things here do work perfectly fine. The buttons here, uh, you've got the audio controls here and you've got the cruise control buttons here on the right side. You do have the steering assist, we'll show you that later once we're in traffic. But uh, this one does come with the Honda Sensing package which is why the price is going to be what it is. More on that towards the end. Now, here in the middle, we've got the two DIN unit here. It's got your usual. Um, it's got the touch screen, the push button controls, but it's on the right side because Honda, well, they do produce a lot of vehicles for the right-hand drive market. So it stands to reason that the buttons would be on the right side because the driver would normally be right here for the, you know, many of the Honda models in the region. That's why it's good to have the audio controls right here. Now, it's a touchscreen, uh, radio, Bluetooth, telephone, stuff like that, the normal stuff. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but the issue is it's very picky when it comes to cables. It doesn't even like the cables that I use. I'll tell you more later, but um, right down here, you've got your climate control. Um, it's actually very nice. I mean, it's no longer using any of those, um, you know, those touch panels that Honda used with the Honda City. Never like those. I'm glad they're going back to the buttons because it's just more tactile that way. Down there, you got USB ports. So again, for the Android Auto of this, which I can't get to work, USB charging ports, 12 volt outlet, two cup holders, pockets over there. You guys have a pocket here for whatever you want there. Uh, here's the key right here. If you notice, lock, unlock, and then it has the remote start. If you press and hold that, which is good. If it's a really hot day, you can start your car while you walk up to it. You have your uh, shifter column here, PRNDS. S is for second, not for sport. Keep that in mind for the low, the low gears of the vehicle. If you're going up or going down a very steep uh, hill or mountain. Now, what else can you point out? Up here, uh, the lights. Nothing really to write home about. Uh, the the mirrors here are the standard kind. It's not the. It's a standard day night, not the electrochromic one, which kind of uh, yeah. Wish it was better than that uh, it also doesn't have a sunglass holder which is kind of yeah odd i mean i have found those features useful in most cars uh also on this side you do have a vanity mirror with a light which is good especially if you want to do your makeup not me uh but one thing i really found weird is here because normally in a lot of cars they remove this to well keep it blank because if you're driving you're not really doing that right anyways 
let's sit in the back and show you what the other seats are like. So the back of the Honda BRV, it's actually it's actually quite nice. I mean, the seating is nice, the visibility is nice because the headrest they kept very very small, which Kashika looks kind of yeah, it looks kind of odd, but it does function as very nicely. So looking out, yeah, you won't get claustrophobia in this one. Uh, looking around, seat back pockets, and they do have a pocket for your phone down here. Actually, two. One on the other side, and yeah, one in there, but none here. So yeah, there you go. There's a 12-volt outlet down there. There's good leg room here. There's not much of a transmission tunnel because it's really just for the exhaust pipe. There's no all-wheel drive option for this one, so doesn't really need it. These seats can recline, and it also slides back and forth, so you can give more space to the people in the very back. But otherwise, it's a very good uh, middle seat. I mean, in terms of comfort, uh, in terms of the AC, I mean, you do have AC there. It does remind me of the old Revo controls, uh, the way this looks. It's, it's uh, quite old school, but it's pretty nice. But now let's get into the third row and see what that's like. So normally I wouldn't be sitting here, but it is actually quite all right. In terms of space distributed evenly right now, I've got maybe about two inches of knee room to this seat back, which is perfectly fine. Uh, the only thing to keep in mind if you're sitting in a third row in a vehicle this uh, short is that you will be sitting over the rear axle. So it will feel a bit, yeah, bouncy, wavy kind of thing. So keep that in mind. But thankfully, Honda improved on the suspension manners of the BRV. More on that later. Uh, you do have cup holders uh, right here, pockets for phones or an iPad and like. You have uh, a little window here, grab handles on either side if you wanna if you wanna rock the whole car. If you wanna do that, there is a 12 volt outlet here, adjustable headrest. And by the way, these seats can be adjusted if you wanna lean it back or uh, push it forward a bit. But overall, for a third row of a vehicle of this size. It's actually pretty good and getting in and out is pretty easy because these uh, seats fold and tumble. Now let's go drive it. Since 2016, Honda has been marketing the BRV as an SUV, which <laughs> I've kind of found it weird because, yes, they put the sticker seven seater SUV on the BRV, the first generation uh, since 2016, but driving the car around, yeah, I'd still call it more like a car, more like a wagon. And the reason is because when you say something is an SUV, there are certain expectations, uh, particularly with height and two ways. One is the ground clearance which this one doesn't have that much of. And two is the eye line of the driver, like the, the field of view, or sorry, the, the eye position of the driver. Like right now, there's a Nissan Almera right beside me. I'm not that much taller than him when it comes to my eye line. This one, the Honda, B, uh, sorry, Brio. Yeah, actually, that's kind of related, kind of. Uh, but even then, my eye line is not that much higher than his is right now in the vehicle. So I'm more going to call this like an MPV even though yes they're marketing it as SUV but it's really more like a, an MPV wagon with seven seats so we've gone through the many features uh, of the BRV and it does seem like an improvement over the previous generation but like I mentioned when I when I took you through the interior of this one it still feels like a bit behind because what Honda is essentially doing is they're using the slightly older parts bin to be able to offer this at a more affordable price because you look at the switches everything even this uh, thing right here even though they still also use this kind of style in some of their other current models uh, the gauge cluster everything looks like it was uh, taken from the previous generation or the previous parts bin of honda while they update the other models like say the civic or the hrv you know the more international models these uh, the brv is one of the more regional developing market models which is why it's offered more in southeast asia and uh, markets uh, with roads like ours now that's not to say it's a lower grade car it is not 
if anything, it actually feels much more well built than before because driving it around, it feels more solid the way it rides over the bumps. Yes, you still get uh, some of the droning you get because honestly, the glass here, this glass uh, on the windows, it's not that thick. So noise does get in, but compared to the previous generation, I have to say it is an improvement overall. In low speed city traffic, the BRV is actually perfectly fine because the steering, it's actually not too light. Like it's, I think it's just right for a vehicle of this size. Um, of course, like I mentioned the noise, but that's, that's really to be expected in this class of vehicle. But overall, the ride is comfortable. The AC is nice and cool, even for the back. Um, the sound system is actually pretty decent, but not really a big fan of this one. I've, I've found that my uh, it's very picky with the cables, so it, it won't activate Android Auto on my uh, cables that I bought from Mr. DIY. You know, so yeah, always low prices and all that stuff. But um, yes, as a drive, I actually enjoy driving this every day because it's quite nice, it's quite handy, it's easy to park. Uh, one thing I do want to note is the rear camera is not that clear, but it's functional for most purposes. But one thing that really impressed me is the fuel economy. Because in my time with this one, I was averaging around 8.2 kilometers per liter, but an average, average speed of just 14 kilometers per hour. That is very slow for my standards because we're in the Christmas season, there's a Christmas rush, a rush and, you know, Christmas traffic. Uh, when the traffic is lighter at around 19, which is still also quite heavy, um, the average fuel economy goes up to around 9.3, which is really, really good for something like this. Uh, on the highway, we're getting around 19 kilometers per liter. Those fuel economy numbers are clearly a result of the work that Honda put into the CVT because they've, they've stuck with the CVT for quite a long time and they've also put in the, well, I guess the more improved version uh, of the 1.5 liter engine in this one. So overall, it's actually working quite well. Uh, the CVT though, the only thing I really don't like about uh, CV, the CVT and this one and most CVTs in general is the noise and because like this. You know how it is when the sound of the engine doesn't really match the speed you're getting? Uh, it sounds like a, well, sewing machine for the lack of a better term. That's really inherent uh, with with uh, CVTs, but it's a bit more pronounced or at least a bit more noticeable uh, with Honda's CVTs. But it does help you modulate the throttle. And what I mean by that is when you hear this sound, it's basically telling you to lift off the throttle a little bit, try to bring the car along to the right speed without incurring that noise. It actually helps you be more efficient, which is kind of a good thing. You don't really need to refer to the eco light that is currently on the indicator right now. So if you try to mash a throttle, it'll give you a lot of that sound. And then when you kind of ease off and cruise and just let the CVT and the, trans and the, the engine do the work, it actually cruises very nicely and very quietly. The big thing about the BRV is that Honda equipped this variant with the sensing package. So you get things like the lane keep assist, uh, like I can press it now. It will try to keep me centered in that lane. It also has the adaptive cruise control, which I'll activate now. Set. It's at, there you go, 42 kilometers, yeah, low speed. So 40 kilometers per hour, and then it'll maintain a distance to the vehicle ahead. Of course, you do need to pay attention. Uh, to make sure that it doesn't go awry. And speaking of go awry or in a, have an error of some kind, I did get an error. I really have some pretty bad luck with Honda's electronics uh, out of their new cars because uh, in late 2020, I got the Honda City for a, for a loaner. It was a fresh off the boat unit and that one had a major issue where whenever I'd go over a hump, a speed bump in my village, the engine would just cut out completely. I think it was a loose terminal on the main relay. I can hear it clicking away. This one, it's not that major, but what happened was, uh, I'll roll some the clip right now. I took a video of the, the indicator here, but the, the sensing system, the lane keep, uh, it was kind of going nuts. So that's something to keep in mind in this vehicle. All that said, 
is the Honda BRV a truly improved vehicle? Well, let's go back to the warehouse and we'll discuss so we can share our final thoughts about what Honda did and how they did with this all new BRV. As vehicles like CRV or RAV4 get more and more expensive and bigger, well, car makers are now paying attention to the class that the BRV is in because it's become kind of a battleground because they have to introduce new nameplates to be able to attract new customers to their brand, especially when it comes to being more affordable. Now, the BRV, I think Honda really did improve on it. A lot of the things that uh, we found to be kind of lacking in this generation have been improved in this one. It drives better, it's smoother, it's more refined, more spacious, and God, I really love how the rear seats fold. It's much nicer, much more practical than that one ever was. However, there are some criticisms. Of course, I love to save my criticisms for the end of the video, and here they are. First, I've already mentioned the fact that they're calling it an SUV because even with the height of this one, not really. Even the expander is actually taller than this vehicle overall with the way you sit and the way it rides above the road. The second is electronics. I just seem to be really lucky experiencing these glitches so I can report them to you. And the one I have is with the advanced safety features. There was a little bit of a glitch there, but after a while of driving, it seems to have not manifested itself anymore, but still worthy to point out because a lot is riding on these new safety features and you really need to be able to trust them fully to be able to maximize them. But the real clincher here, pricing. Because at 1390, it's hard to justify this vehicle. Yes, it does get the features, all the nice stuff, but it's still a small vehicle. And the fact that at 1390, it's already in the price range of, let's say, an Innova, which by the way, there is a version of the Innova, I think it's the E-Diesel Automatic, which is priced lower than this. Well, that's going to be a problem. And there are also a lot of other new models from automakers, which are also much larger, in the same price range. So it's hard to justify the vehicle when it comes to value. So if you're looking for value, well, that's something you won't really find in a lot of Hondas nowadays. That seems to be a common trend with a lot of their vehicles like uh, the Civic or the HRV. You just don't see it. But if you're looking for value, I suggest looking at some of the lower grade versions of the BRV. No, not the V without the sensing because that's already at 1.26 thereabouts. You want to be looking at the Honda uh, BRV 1.5S CVT at around 1.15. That one seems to be a better match when it comes to looking for value. And it seems we have to really book that right away so we can test it out and find out. This is Vince of AutoIndustria.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video useful and watch out for more reviews of the BRV in the future. Let us know in the comments below what you think of this new model from Honda.